Problem 17. A camping supply company produces backpacks in two models, Journey and Trek. The Journey model requires four hours of labor and the company makes a profit of $40. The Trek model requires six hours of labor and the company makes a profit of $80. The distributor will accept no more than four Trek models and 15 Journey models per week. What is the minimum number of hours of labor that are required for the company to make a profit of at least $400 per week. Step number one, define the variables. Look in the problem to see what are the objects being worked with. In this particular case, we are looking at two models of backpacks, Journey and Trek. So to define our variables, we are going to let X represent the number of journey backpacks. And we'll let Y represent the number of Trek backpacks. Step number two, construct the objective function. So in this case, what are we trying to accomplish? We are trying to minimize number of labor hours. Minimize the number of labor hours. So we look in the problem and we see that the journey model requires four hours of labor and that the Trek model requires six hours of labor per backpack. So to construct the objective function then we would simply take the number of journey backpacks and multiply that by four hours to get the total hours allocated towards the construction of journey backpacks. We'll take the number of Trek backpacks multiply that by six hours in order to get the number of hours allocated towards Trek backpack construction and the sum of those two will be the sum of the hours spent in constructing the backpacks. So our objective function then will be as follows. We will go 4x plus 6y equals hours. Okay. Step number three, define the constraints. In other words, write the inequalities. So here, what we need to do is to look at um, what are the things that uh, are parameters within this particular problem. All right. First of all, is there a minimum number of backpacks, either trek or journey, that we will make? So obviously we could build none but we wouldn't go lower than none. In other words, we wouldn't have negative amounts. So two obvious constraints or inequalities that we would have would be x greater than or equal to zero and y greater than or equal to zero. So we know at the, at the very minimum we're going to make no backpacks, but we're not going to go in depth in debt or have negative amounts. Okay. <clears throat> now, continuing on, another inequality that we could look at would be here, the distributor will accept no more than four treks and 15 journey backpack models per week. So a further constraint that we would have is, looking on a weekly basis, is that um, the number of Trek backpacks is going to be less than or equal, excuse me, number of journey backpacks is going to be less than or equal to 15. And the number of Trek backpacks is going to be less than or equal to 4. So those would be the constraints. There 
there is one more constraint that we would need to write. And that has to do with the minimum amount of money that we would make per week. So you see here that they have to have a profit of at least $400. A profit of at least $400 per week. So we know that the profit from all bought backpacks has to be greater than or equal to 400. Well, what profits what are what are the profits? They're the profits from the journey backpacks and the profits from the trek. So profits from journey plus plus profits from trek have to exceed or be bigger than or equal to four hundred dollars well how would we express profits from the journey backpack each journey gets a profit of forty dollars so if we take the number of journey packbacks multiply that by forty that gives us the total amount of profits from the journey backpacks do the same thing for the trek and we would have 80y so the sum of these two profits have to exceed or be bigger than four hundred dollars okay now we can simplify this inequality by dividing both sides of the inequality by 40 this becomes now x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 10. So we completed step number three. We have x greater than or equal to zero. We have y greater than or equal to zero. We have x less than or equal to 15. We have y less than or equal to 4. That's supposed to be x less than or equal to 15. y less than or equal to 4. And we have 1x plus 2y greater than or equal to 10. Well, the next video will go on to step 4.